Okay, this is going to be four card you pick with Diana Cross finishes for each of those four cards. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, I hope you will like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very, 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 very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, it's going to be four cards. You're going to get to pick one, two, three, or four, or a couple of them, or all of them if you want to. And uh, think of uh, what's important to you to get an answer to, and uh, and then we'll do the uh, the oracle. And then after that, there'll be a full uh, a dyadic cross. Uh, yeah, a dyadic cross for each one of those uh, to finish. So here we go. You know, I do want to tell you, prepare yourself for this. Uh, maybe uh, pause the tape, go get yourself something to drink, uh, throw some water in your face, uh, you know, sit your, straight up your clothes. Uh, think about what it is that you'd like to uh, address with this and uh, take a deep breath and, and uh, let's uh, go into it with a calm demeanor, but with a definite uh, uh, question or situation that you want to look for an answer to. So these cards are the Ancient Italian Tarot. These are low scarabio cards, and um, they're very interesting. What happens here, if you're used to, they harken back to like the 15th century, the mid 1400s, where um, uh, tarot is, is, is supposed to have uh, originated. And uh, the guidebook that comes with these is not too difficult to read, although the writing is kind of small, but it does come in several different languages. So uh, you can look that up and see uh, if your language is here. If it's not, uh, English is your first language. Um, so it's a useful little guidebook, although, although generic. And uh, the cards themselves are beautiful, actually. The backs of the cards are nice. The size of them is, is useful. And then, but the, you'll see here that the divination of these cards, um, you really have to know uh, your Rider weight system to make sense out of a lot of these cards. The court cards and the major arcana are not too hard to figure out that, what they are and who they are. But uh, some of these uh, other cards, you know, it really takes a, being familiar with the deck and knowing your uh, system that you're going to use to uh, uh, to come off uh, as, as if you know what you're saying about these cards. So there's that. So, and you know, these cards were originally created uh, for playing a game called Tarachi, I guess is how that's pronounced originally. And they sort of uh, became uh, divination cards later on. So I like to, and I have a thing about my cards is that I really don't like them to come out upside down because I'm not confident in my divination of upside down cards. But so that can be an issue with some of these because you don't really know. And I guess it doesn't matter with these if they come out inverted or not. But um, so that's what you've got. If you're thinking about getting these cards, um, that's what you're going to uh, deal with there. Okay, here we go. So this will be a, a four card oracle. Which What does that mean? That means I'm going to put four cards down here that you can ask a question of you know typically a yes no question uh, is best and the answer will come up as a yes no or sometimes a maybe and then but then we're going to take those four cards individually and finish them out with a diet cross so that's a six uh, card uh, spread uh, with a definite answer at the end so that's what we're going to do and I always like to say you know take this minute to maybe take a deep breath and then let it out get yourself organized do what I forgot to do. Get yourself something to drink, and um, and just relax and uh, enjoy the read. And uh, we'll see if we can get to some definitive answers for you. So we're going to take four cards out of here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Sit these off to the side, and I'll lay them out so that you can take a minute to choose the card or cards that. Uh, will mean something for you. So we have one, two, three, four. 
remember, take a deep breath. Get your question uh, into your mindset. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you can stop the video if you need a minute to make some decisions. And one, two, three, four. Easy. So now we'll do a reveal. And then that card will be the signifier for the diet across it will eventually do for all four of these. So the uh, uh, first card, if that's the one you chose, is this uh, King of Spades. Um, and uh, spades are swords. So the king of swords. So the swords are uh, truth, uh, justice, rules, law. That's what I would like to say. And uh, and so this king of swords, this is a great big yes card, by the way. And so this king of swords is telling you incomplete control. Okay. This is going to happen. And it's going to happen in the correct manner. Um, uh, so that's what you want to pay attention to. So the number one card, if that's the one you chose, is a yes card. And that's the king of spades, king of swords. Okay. The number two card, if that's the one you chose, Ah, is the moon, La Luna. So secrets being revealed. Beautiful card. And so you have these hounds just howling up at the moon, you know, baying for those secrets uh, which come crawling uh, out. And um, so, yeah, this is a time uh, when uh, you want to know what's uh, behind the curtain. So for me, this is a yes card. Secrets being revealed. This is going to give you information, and information is power. Okay, so that's what you have. If uh, you chose the number two card, that is the moon card. Secrets being revealed. Okay, if you chose the third card. All right, so this is the Ten of Pentacles. Great card. This is a great big yes card. And the Ten of Pentacles is, uh, you know, Pentacles are value, worth. Sometimes it can actually be money. And uh, the Ten of Pentacles speaks to, like, familial wealth, something that you can pass on to another generation. And it doesn't necessarily have to be money. I mean, that can be uh, thoughts. That can be traditions. That can be um, a way of thinking. Uh, it, can be, it can even be not necessarily passed on to a future generation. It can be something that carries on throughout whatever process maybe that you're going through or planning to take, uh, uh, you know, take on. So this Ten of Pentacles is a nice, nice, nice yes card. If that's the third card that you chose. That's the, uh, the Ten of Pentacles. Yes. Fourth card, if that's what you chose, is the Seven of Swords. Now, this is a no card. The Seven of Swords is uh, like uh, theft, betrayal, um, feeling uh, taken advantage of, uh, feeling uh, as if something's been gotten, gotten on you, or maybe you're the one that uh, may be uh, making the sneaky um, uh, uh, thing happen. So whatever it is, this is saying no to that, all right? And we'll further define it with the diet at cross in the end. But the seven of, of uh, swords is um, typically uh, theft and betrayal, okay? So that's the cards that we have right now. So we're going to turn over three of them and then take the first one which will be this signifier card, this King of Spades, a nice, nice yes card. Give these a nice shuffle and see what further can we get out of this for this first card, if that's what you chose, this King of King of, uh, of Swords, King of Spades. Okay, give them a little bit of a, a riffle shuffle. Spread these out and pull six cards out of there to finish this uh, cross. Or five, actually, because we have the first one. So that's one. Two, three, four, and five. I'm going to put these cards over here to just kind of work on the energy for those questions. Take these five and let's get the divination going. So the signifier card, King Spades, being in charge of these uh, rules, laws, uh, uh, power. Um, there we go. Justice. The challenge to that is this Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles is a pretty good card to get. You know, Knight of Pentacles is really just being a wash in all the value that you need, uh, maybe more than what you need. There's some to share here. And so this Nine of Pentacles uh, tells us uh, that uh, as a challenge to that to King of, of Swords, um, it could be, you know, uh, uh, what do they call that? An embarrassment of riches, okay? So, so much uh, to towards getting this thing done that sometimes that can make it more difficult uh, in a situation. But just know that there's plenty there to choose from. So this uh, Nine of Pentacles, uh, a lot of uh, a wash in value is the challenge to this King of Swords really being in charge of this, these uh, rules, this law, this justice, this truth. The basis of this reading then is this Knight of Wands. 
Okay, love this. This Knight of Wands is, a, and remember, this was a yes card. This Knight of Wands is a great big offer of, of a plan of getting something done, okay? The Knight is the guy who's going to take his charge. He's going to take his plan that he's been given to deal with and make sure it happens. And he's on a steed here that's just raring to go. That's, you know, not a, a shy of making this journey. So the base of this reading is a very strong... Um, uh, sense or feeling or or uh, empowerment to get this plan uh, on the road. The past of this reading then is this Two of Wands. And now the Two of Wands is interesting because this is at a time when we said, okay, there's some plans, short-term plans. Wands are forward movement, um, uh, plans, uh, motion, uh, fire, uh, action. Uh, so this Two of Wands, this, these short-term plans uh, is how you came into this situation. So maybe there was an idea of where this was going to go that wasn't completely fleshed out, but now uh, there's no reason to, uh, to use it to its full advantage. The sky of this reading then is this Four of Swords. Four of Swords? Yes, Four of Swords. Okay, so the Four of Swords is um, okay, taking a beat, taking a break, understanding that uh, you want to study the situation very carefully before you move forward. So you've got this King of Swords who's really, you know, wanting to make sure that his his uh, truth is uh, is fully taken advantage of. But in the sky with his Four Swords, we know that let's take a moment to really consider everything that has to do with this issue. And then um, with all of that knowledge, then make a move. The uh, likely outcome of this, uh, if you chose that first card, look at that. It's the Pope, Il Papa. So this is the Hierophant. This is the Major Arcana. Beautiful card to end up in. Another Yes card. So yeah, this is telling us that we have, you know, let's pay attention to the rules. Let's pay attention to the way a thing should be done. Let's pay attention to the value in the serenity of making a graceful decision or giving whatever has occurred the benefit of grace. All right, so that's the uh, final outcome if that number one card is what you chose. And just to go over it quickly, so we started with a signifier, a big yes card, and this king of spades, all the authority that you need to move this thing forward. And with this nine of pentacles as a challenge to it, this will tell you that sometimes, you know, all of the bounty that's associated with this situation, all the choices that could be made, all the value that maybe just is innate to this situation can get in the way of, of making this move. But this nine of wands down here at the base of the whole thing tells us, oh, no. This is going to happen. We're going to make this happen. And with this two uh, of wands over here uh, in the past, tell me there might have been a short-term plan or some sort of an inkling of a, a direction to go in. And this four of swords up in the sky tells us, look, okay, let's, recons let's consider everything that's involved with this before we just plunge ahead and let's make a careful decision because in the end, it's going to be another big yes with this hierophant, this pope, this, uh, this authority of, of, of the value that comes with whatever this issue is that you're dealing with. So that's pretty good. I'm going to put that one aside. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn him over and then incorporate these cards back into here. And then we'll take the next card, if you chose number two, and see what will come of that. So this is the moon. This is secrets being revealed. And I think of this, especially in this instance right here, as a yes card. Secrets being revealed. Uh, knowledge is power. And the more knowledge we can get on an issue, the better. And let's recognize that sometimes those secrets can be revealed in a very mysterious or half-cloaked way, you know. And um, so let's pay attention. We need five cards to finish this out. So this will be one, two, three, four, and five. And we'll take these cards, put them over here to work on this energy, and finish out this dyadic cross. The signifier, secrets, okay, information coming out. The challenge to that with this three of wands is long-term planning. You know, wands are motion, uh, moving forward, uh, action, plans, okay? So this uh, long-term plan is the challenge to this information that may be coming out. So, um, yeah, I would say that let's pay attention to what this is, and you may need to adjust some of these plans for what you know, or maybe leave room for maybe what you think uh, might be coming up. And the basis of this reading then is this Queen of Spades, this Queen of Swords. And so the Queen of Swords, again, is very authoritative. She's got her rules, she's got her laws, she's got her justice, she's got her, her uh, um, right uh, in her hand. And uh, she's feeling uh, 
uh, very possessed about this. So to come into this with the Queen of Swords at your base is a very strong way to approach this to decision or this, this issue. The past of this reading, okay, with the hangman, uh, La Peso. So this fella is telling us, look, take a look at it from another perspective, okay? Maybe, <clears throat> maybe that's you were forced already to do that. It's not a death sentence. This is uh, uh, not even quite a punishment. This fellow's just <coughs> up here knowing that whatever this issue is, there's another way to look at it. And that's an advantage, an advantageous thing to do. Okay? Or to have done. In the sky of this reading is this Four of Swords again. So the cards, I love it when they repeat because it tells me that they understand that they're playing the game with us. So this Four of Swords, again, just like this uh, uh, hangman here, is telling us, at your peril, though, you know, really consider what you're doing before you get up and jump into action. Okay? That's what the Four of Swords are. And the Four of Swords, again, truth, justice, rules, law. Okay? Like that. The uh, likely outcome of this whole thing, then, is uh, with this Five of Cups, is, um, is feeling... Uh, um, Something's a little bit left out, like something's been spilled, but that uh, there's more to go on with. So this Five of Cups is a bounty, but with some uh, with some with some hesitation. Maybe some of this has been used, and you're concerned about what you've got left. But this was a big yes situation. So just to go over again quickly, we'll say this is the Moon card. This is a signifier issues becoming clearer okay and it's challenged by this long-term plan so whenever we get more information those plans are easier to make and that the base of this reading with this queen of spades understand that we have a lot of authority to get this done look at it in a different direction with this in a different way different aspect with this hangman and then with this four swords up here carefully reconsider everything that you're learning but know that with this five of cups you may feel as if there's something a little left out but you've got plenty to keep going on and so that's a, a, a yes it's a little bit of hesitant yes a studied yes and that should be something that uh, makes you feel good, I think. So put these back into the deck, and then we'll go on to our third card, if that's the one you chose. Okay, the third card, the signifier then, is this Ten of Pentacles. Fantastic card to get. This is generational wealth, a ripple effect that's going to carry on uh, into the future for whatever uh, this issue is. It could be actually familial wealth. It could be just, you know, uh, knowledge, some value that's going to be uh, continue to be useful. Five cards to help this divination. So that's one, two, three, four, and that's five. Okay, put this here to finish up the energy of that reading. And the signifier card, Ten of Pentacles, challenged by what? This is challenged by, look at that, cards repeating again. Again, they're in the game with us. So this Queen of Spades, again, fully in charge of her value, her truth, her law, her justice. And uh, so all this bounty is, is a little tempered uh, by this Queen who's saying, let's make a wise decision. The base of this reading with this uh, was a six, uh, seven of cups. Uh, seven of cups. I'm going to use my cheat sheet as I so often do uh, to make sure I've got the right divination here. Oh, yeah, this is uh, illusion and delusion. Lots of choices, as a matter of fact. So the seven of cups is telling us that, the, first of all, as the base of this reading, could be that there was something that wasn't quite clear as to which way to go, or that there were a lot of choices to take in this, in this decision. Listen, I'd rather have more choices than fewer. The past of this reading, Two of Pentacles, finding a balance for that worth, that value has to find a way to balance itself out. And uh, so that's a good, a nice, cautious way to come into the reading. And up in the sky of this reading, with this Eight of Swords, so the Eight of Swords can be trapped or feel trapped, but you're not really trapped, okay? So sometimes we are frozen up uh, when we have to make a decision. But look, you've got everything that you need to make this happen. So consider it, but understand that you can reel into getting this done. And then the likely out of this whole thing is the Wheel of Fortune. And uh, so this tells me, and I always say that this Wheel of Fortune is always moving in an advantageous direction. Not to say that there can't be some hiccups along the way, but the majority of the ride is going to be exactly where you need to be, up on top of the world. So this Wheel of Fortune uh, makes this Yes card even sweeter. Okay. So for the final card, which was our only no card, let's get these incorporated right back into this deck so that we can do this final divination with some authority. And so if you chose the number four card, then we've got here the seven of swords, theft and betrayal. Okay, kind of ominous, really, but it's a no card and it may be alerting you to uh, 
something about the situation that you're dealing with just to understand uh, that there can be some caution there. There may have been already some, some advantage taken by you or by someone else. So that Seven of Swords is definitely a caution. I'll say it's a no card. Could be a maybe, but I'll say it's a no card. Okay. We're going to need five cards to finish this divination. So we go, oh, two wanted to come out. So two, three, four, and five. Okay. We're done with these cards. They've done their job. And we'll see how we finish out this dyadic cross. Number four card, uh, Theft of Betrayal. Okay. Okay. So this is challenged by the star. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, sometimes, you know, it could be that someone has stolen the spotlight or we feel like the spotlight is on us or something where it shouldn't. But whatever it is, this theft of betrayal is challenged by a lot of attention uh, into the situation. The uh, base of this reading, again, cards are repeating themselves. I mean, the chance of that happening is just so uh, uh, not uh, supposed to happen. So uh, value, finding a balance, uh, coming into it with that. The past of this reading with this um, night of pentacles so we've got lots of worth here in this reading and this knight is going to take that value and move forward with it in a steady uh, um, uh, measured uh, authoritative way okay so that's kind of how we came into this no situation no remember i'll recap it in a minute and then the sky for this is Imperatrice. So this is the uh, Empress. And so the Empress is almost like Mother Nature. I mean, she's got everything she needs to be successful and fruitful and bountiful. So this no card is taking on another dimension now. And with the final outcome, as this Four of Cups, is sometimes being offered something you don't want or maybe thinking you weren't going to do something you didn't particularly want to do. But uh, it's just a caution. Okay, so to recap the reading, we started out with this Seven of Swords, kind of uh, uh, theft of betrayal. Challenged by what? Challenged by the star, which is a lot of illumination. So it could be that something happened that now there's a light shine on it, uh, a, a starry light. Okay, the basis of this reading with this Two of Pentacles is finding that right balance, and that's how we came into this. The past of this reading with this Knight of Pentacles is an authoritative knight really coming in to make something happen. And with this uh, Empress up in the top, this is fruitful, bountiful. It's something that we can shoot for. It's really the goal that you want to have. And then with this uh, final outcome of this Four of Cups, it's just a little more caution, understanding what it is that you have already and what it is being offered to you. And just uh, move forward and make the decision uh, that feels appropriate to you. And listen, don't be caught or hung up on making a decision. Make a decision. Even if it turns out to be the wrong decision, it was the right decision for reasons that you'll find out later, likely. So that's what we've got today if those were the cards that you chose. Okay, I hope all that was useful to you. And if it wasn't, maybe just ruminate on it. Uh, look at it again later, another day. Think about people in your life who are important to you or situations that you're dealing with and you might find that this translates into that or those uh, somehow. Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.